I want to speak to you what I call the ego believer. The ego believer. That is a new signature, all right, that God has been putting in my heart right now. God has been speaking to me about the ego. As a matter of fact, my signature in the spirit is that of an ego. I never understood it until I began to follow after the Lord. Now, let me tell you this. When God speaks to you, it is your responsibility to go after him and I'm chop up, eat up everything it speaks to you in that regard, alright, you're not going to get it in preachings, you're going to have to get it in the place of spending time, isolated time with the Lord, and as I spend time with the Lord, I come to realize and understand a lot more when the Lord began to speak to me about the eagle, praise the name of Jesus and for those of you, I told you before, for those of you who saw me, I had to even begin to make it into a fashion concept I began to wear it in the form of a hoodie Interestingly, what shocked me was, not only was I, I thought I was just making the hoodie for myself, I didn't know that the world was watching. I decided to take some sample of the hoodie with me on my trip, and it was, I was shocked at how much interest I garnered. I became a hoodie salesman, praise the name of Jesus. In dollars. What was just a small concept in my prayer closet? And God began to speak to me about the eagle, and I decided to wear it. As I wore my eagle emblem, whatever I did, people showed interest. Something just told me, take some sample with you. So I took a bit about like, about a, like 10 and uh, sold everything out. And they said, do you have more? I said, I don't have more. They said, can we order? And so I got orders. Yesterday, someone said, Pastor, you know, when I wore mine in my city, three people stopped me in the shopping mall. And say, where did you get this? I want it. So, Pastor, you need to open a website. You need to open a Shopify. I will walk with you. This is a real deal, Pastor. So, here you see a hoodie seller. Praise the name of Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Everything God speaks to you about is something He wants to use to shape in your life in the future. And so, when God began to speak to me about the ego, I realized that I need to have a little bit, pressing a little bit in, the, in what God is saying. Amen. Now, interestingly, one of the things that God wants to do when he speaks to us about the eagle, and one of the things I want you to understand is that God wants to build stamina in you. God wants to build what? God wants to build stamina. Why do you need stamina? You need stamina because there is a whole lot that you need to be able to carry with your shoulder strong. So, strength. So these are the days of strength. What did I say these are the days of? These are the days of strength. You have to be able to outlast and outlive the days in which we live, you need strength. Tell your neighbor strength. Nobody in this room should rejoice and sit in a place of weakness and pathetic life. You have to gravitate towards strength. The days, a lot of things have been thrown at you from every place. You need to be strong. To be strong first for yourself. To be strong in the Lord. To be strong for your family. To be strong for your industry. To be strong as a leader. There is no harder time to be a leader than now. I don't even know how I'm coping and how I'm surviving as a leader in this day except by the strength of the Lord you got to be strong say I've got to be strong that's why I want to speak to you about about building stamina about the ego believer because that's what you have to be and I'm not preaching at you I do not have any interest in preaching at all all right what I want to do in the name of the Lord is to release an impartation here this morning and to strengthen someone and to help someone build stamina amen let me start by a quote by someone a man called Ambrose, and this is what he said. He said, the ego lives to a very advanced age. And in molting, its youth is renewed with its new feathers. And I will explain what that means when you talk about molting. Right, so I want you to please track with me. Now, the Apostle Paul in the book of 2 Corinthians began to speak to us a little bit about weakness and about strength. And let me just take you there. The book of 2 Corinthians chapter 12 from verse 1 to 10. Paul says this, I must go on boasting. Although there is nothing to be gained, I will go on to visions and revelations of the Lord. Somebody say visions and revelations of the Lord. I'm praying for you today that God will give you a personal revelation of who you truly are. That God will give you a personal vision of what your future holds. 
You need to have a personal revelation of your future. The reason we get broken by situations and circumstances and we become inconsolable is because we don't have the revelation of who we are in the Lord. Hallelujah. And you need to have that. Because in a world where everything is hazy and everything is uncertain, you need a vision from the Lord. But one of the things about the capacity of the eagle is it has very keen sight, keen eyesight. And so vision is a key thing in this day. Strength of vision. Someone says strength of vision. So, so Paul says, I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago was cut up to the third heavens. Whether it was in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows. And I know that this man, whether in the body or apart from the body, I do not know, but God knows. He was cut up to paradise and he heard inexpressible things. Things that no one is permitted to tell. Now Paul, is talking about the experience, said, I had things, God showed me things that if I tell you about them, it will blow your mind. Now, every time you go to God in prayer, in, cl- in, cl- in your closet, God must reveal things to you. Most of the things that God reveals to you, therefore you can share them. There are things that God is speaking to me, I cannot share with you. I'm not allowed to share them with you. Because they are for me, they are, for, they are to strengthen me. They are to help me when I go through the valley of the shadow of death. And every person here, I don't know who you have been listening to, I don't know who I've been talking to you. One of the most profound things that I heard this morning was in our meeting as leaders. When Pastor began to share about Hebrews, Hebrews 11. Because that's an aspect of faith that people don't want to talk about. People don't want to talk about when you pray for the promises and you don't receive them yet. And you never actually receive them. They don't want to talk about that. People want to talk about claim it and say it. Say it and believe it. And receive it and claim it. And that's why we get ashamed when life hits us and we feel, how should I be saying this? How should I be going through this? How can I stand before the congregation and say, I'm going through this? So a lot of believers are ashamed of their experiences. So they hide it. They numb it. Right? And sometimes they medicate it. (laughs) There is nothing to be ashamed of. Do you hear what I'm saying? If you are walking with God, you are going to go through your valleys of the shadow of death. You are going to have your fair share of troubles. Right? You are going to, but when you go through those troubles, you should be able to stand in the midst of that trouble and rejoice in the Lord. It takes a revelation to be able to do that. If you do not have a personal revelation of the Lord, when life hits you hard, and it will, I don't know who is talking to you, but life will hit you hard. Life will hit you hard. You are a praying person. You are fasting. You love the Lord. You are given. You are a church leader. But life will hit you hard. And when that happens, the only thing that will help you to stand strong in the midst of the attack, and whatever it is, is a personal revelation of the Lord in your closet, in your secret place. So Paul was sharing with us this experience of his secret place. Hallelujah. And he says... God began to speak to me inexpressible things. Things that no one is permitted to tell. He says, I will boast about a man like that, but I will not boast about myself, except about my weaknesses. Even if I should choose to boast, I will not be a fool because I will be speaking the truth, but I refrain so no one will think of me more than is warranted by what I do or say. Or because of these surpassingly great revelations. So Paul is saying, I hone the revelation. I accept that God speaks things to me that I'm not even able to share with people. But also, I'm not going to deny the fact that all this are happening in my life in a day of weakness. All right. But I'm not going to be ashamed of my weaknesses. I'm going to boast in the midst of the weaknesses. I'm going to say, in the self same person are revelations of the Lord that are hard to tell, but also witnesses. Right. And that is, that is what makes your Christianity very authentic. Right. You're authentic only as you recognize that your life is powerful, but you also don't deny the witnesses. 
Anybody listen to what I'm saying? Do I have anybody in the house this morning? So Paul says, uh, Therefore, in order to keep me from being conceited, I was given a thorn in my flesh, a messenger of Satan, to torment me. Now when we talk about, <laughs> when believers today talk about torment, they don't talk about it. They talk about their exploits. Have you had it? People, you hardly hear people talk about the testimonies of troubles they went through. Everybody's talking about their Gucci, their car, how everything happened, how they didn't pray for anything and everything just happened. And when everything, anything happens to the country, they get the cash. That's why they just to stop coming to church. There are people who have stopped coming to church because they got the heat with life's challenges. You saw them in church when things were rosy, when everything was happening, when there was breakthrough. All these breakthrough seminar teachers, the Lord will forgive them. Right. And because Paul says this, I was given a thorn in my flesh, and it was a messenger of Satan, and it was sent to torment me. Three times I pleaded with the Lord, Lord. Please take it away first time. Lord, please take it away second. Lord, please heal me. Lord, please do this. Lord, he says, but he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. For my power is made perfect in your weakness. You truly never understand where the place of strength is until you know it from the place of weakness. It says, therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my witnesses so that Christ's power may rest on me. What Paul is saying is every time weakness shows up in my life, I know God is somewhere close by. And I tell you something, people, every time life gets tough and gets rough, every time you feel like giving up and you don't know the next thing to do, look well. God is right in the midst of it see God in the midst of it. So Paul says, that's why for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses. I delight in insults. I delight in hardships. Oops. Hardships? Me, I no go suffer. Hello, people. I no go beg for bread. Amen. That's why I told them, you must never sing that song in this church. There's some songs I'm canceling out. Because they wreck the faith of the saints. They make the saints feel ashamed. I like to talk about my life experience. And when when they told me about my sister's situation and she was sick, and she told me that, but I'm talking about I have cancer and um, cancer of the breast, and they've taken it out and they said I'm okay. And she went through through therapy, and she said, in fact, they were called on time. Anyway, to cut a long story short, the next thing, a couple of months after, she called me and said, well, I have to be in Lagos. They said there's an emergency. They saw something, my whatever it is. They have to refer me. And I got to speak with Dr. Sego, and Dr. Sego was very helpful. Thank God for brethren. Thank God for brethren. Praise the name of Jesus. Yeah. You know, you must never hide your weaknesses. I could say I'm pastor of the church. I'm an apostle over the house of God. I'm a man of prayer and a man of fasting. I can pray this through. I spoke to her. She made some right contact with some people. They gave my son of the best treatments. We went to see her after church every week for three weeks. I woke up one morning and I felt the Lord give me a word. And as I was praying, I said it here before, I took my sister, that one of the SMS she sent to me, and I said, Lord Jesus, please give, this, give me this girl's life. She lost her parents when she was one year old. I was 11 years old, Lord. I nurtured her. God, she can't die, God. This girl can't die, God. Please, God, give me a line. I began to weep and I began to cry. And I thought God gave me. I thought God gave me a life back. I thought I prayed it through. Only for me to be called while I was out of the country. Rushed out to the emergency. She didn't make it. She passed. All my siblings, my older siblings, ran away. Because in this culture, when you lose your mom, when you lose your father, when you lose your big brother, everybody shows up for the funeral. When you lose your youngest sister, when you lose the youngest person in the family, 
Nobody shows up. Nobody wants to touch it. Everybody feels it's a thing of shame. But I have strength in the Lord. So I made up my mind. I was going to go there and bury her. And that's what I did. Went into the place. Saw her lying in state. Saw her in the coffin. Stood right in the front of the coffin. And I was not broken. My younger sister was crying her heart out. I was strong. Because in the midst of your weakness is the revelation of the Lord. You don't have to understand that. You have to understand that. If you do not understand that, this life will break you. You will recant. You will deny God. You will think God is not faithful. You will think God is wicked. You will think God doesn't love you. You will deny your family. You will lose your heart. You will be suicidal. You will die young. You will create problems everywhere. Everything will go wrong because you don't have a revelation of this. Paul says, because I know that every time I go through these things, God is right in the midst of me. Every time I go through tough times, I know the grace of God is there. Even though I pray three times and say, God, take it away from me. God, take it away from me. And it did not happen. I know that it's not a thing to be ashamed of. Rather, it's a thing to boast of that I know in the midst of my weakness, there is my breakthrough. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses so that the power of Christ may rest on me. That's what Paul says. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses. I delight in insults. I delight in hardship. I delight in persecutions. I delight in difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Say, Father, give me a revelation of the outwork of your spirit in my life. Give me a revelation. Give me a new revelation. That's why I want to speak to you about how to be able to mount up and not run and not flinch in the midst of the weaknesses, in the midst of the hardships. That's what, made you, that's what makes you a hardcore believer. That's what, makes you, that's, what make, that's what makes you a Navy SEAL. Get what I'm saying? You know, I went on a cruise ship you know, with my wife, it was supposed to be our 30th wedding anniversary cruise. And we already had that fixed. And we arrived on the cruise, okay, where you had 24 restaurants. On one ship, 24 restaurants. You don't fast in that time. I mean, some of them. If I was, it was one of the, we were, we were at one of the table, all right, when the news hit. Boom! But my brother-in-law's death. <laughs> we were on a cruise ship. Now, okay, now let me tell you, what's a cruise ship? A cruise ship is where you have 24 restaurants. All man of Mexican, Italian, Japanese, whatever it is. And you know how many you know I'm a, I'm a foodie? I went to all of them. But a cruise ship is different from a warship. In a warship, the foods are in get to go. Because the alarm can sound anytime and say, jump out into the space. Uh, we have to learn how to cross over from being cruiser ship people to warriors. On the cruise ship, you can, you can flanger and think about all of our pleasure. But on the warship, you are ready for battle all the time. You are an armory. Your camouflage is on at all times because once the alarm hits, everybody takes the pressure and shoots out of that whatever it is or, or goes into whatever it is. And God is saying something. You have to make a decision. Where do you want to sail? Do you want to be on a cruise ship all your life? Or you want to be a warrior? Because life will hit you and you have to be able to answer back in strength. Someone say strength. Someone shout strength. That's why Paul says, I, I delight in these things, in weaknesses, in insults, in hardships. They make my make flow. They make my strength go to active mode, in persecutions, in difficulties. So Paul saying, I don't even pray with difficulties. I'm strong in the midst of it. 
All right, so Pastor, what, what did I just say? I thought you were talking about eagle believer. Yes, these are the things that you need to understand when you want to begin to sow as the eagle, Isaiah 40. So God began to speak to, to his people, and I want to look at it in the Amplified Version of the Bible, Isaiah 40, from verse 28 to verse 31. I read it in the Amplified. It says, Have you not known? Have you not heard? The everlasting God, the Lord. You need to know that the Lord is the owner of your life and everything. Right. Many times we think we, think we have a choice. We think that God is not, God doesn't own us. Right. We think we own our life, our money, our time, our days, our marriage, our breakthroughs, our church ministry, everything. We think we, you don't own nothing. The Lord is the owner. He is the Lord. Amen. He says, the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, he does not faint, he does not grow weary. There is no such enough of his understanding. He gives power to the faint and the weary. And to him who has no might, he increases strength. Someone says strength. All right, so there are people here who have no might. God is intent on increasing strength for you. Amplified says, causing it to multiply and making it to abound. So God is sending me today to say to you, he wants to multiply your strength in the midst of the crisis and make your strength to abound. And you need that. Someone say, I need that. He says, even youths shall faint and be weary and selected young men shall feebly stumble and fall exhausted. I'm reading Amplified Version. 31 says, but those who wait for the Lord, but those who wait for the Lord, who expect, who look for, and hope in him. So there is wait for the Lord or wait on the Lord is in your raising your expectation. I prayed on this yesterday for the people. You have to say in the midst of it, I'm raising my expectation. I'm raising my hope. I'm not going to sink with this. It says, even you shall find a Marie and select a young man shall feeble. Yeah. Verse 3 says, for those who wait for the Lord, who expect, look for it, and hope in Him, shall change and renew their strength. The key word I want to bring to you today is uh, renew. Someone say renew. And I'm going to tell you a story about the eagle as I, as I bring this to a close shortly. He says, and renew their strength and power. They shall lift their wings and mount up close to God as eagles that's why I'm bringing this version for you it says as eagles mount up to the sun now that's the strength of an eagle the eagle is the only bird that looks at the sun right in the high and fly towards it as a matter of fact the, the eagle flies towards the sun once every 10 years for renewal it says uh, as eagles mount up to the sun they shall run and not be weary they shall walk and not faint or become tired so that's the strength of an eagle why does the eagle fly towards the sun as a matter of fact I read somewhere an old fable by some guy a rabbi you know this Jewish rabbi you know rabbi Sadai says Every tenth year, the eagle flies near the sun. And when it's not able any longer to, be, to bear the burning heat, she falls down into the sea and soon loses her feathers and thus renews her rigor. This she does every tenth year till the hundredth year. So an eagle can live for a hundred years. The strength God built that thing, it was a, it's a monster of a bird. God built it with so much strength. That's why when you're dealing with strength, eagle is a classic. When you're dealing with crisis, eagle is a classic. When you're dealing with overcoming troubles, challenges, life's trauma, eagle is a classic. Because some of some time, if the eagle doesn't pull himself up, when he gets a heat that tenth year, some of them never make it. 
But every time an eagle soars toward the sun and gets hit by that sun and something happens to his feathers and he plunges into the sea, if he can carry himself through and make it, then it lasts another 10 years, another 10 years, another 10 years until the 100th year. You can outlast this trouble. What am I trying to say? I'm saying you can outlast every trouble. You didn't hear what I said. I said you can outlast every trouble. Trouble is a part of life. Every 10 years, the eagle gets a heat with trouble. But it is learned to plug back into the sea. And every time it goes into the sea, it comes out with new feathers. A new vigor is given to it. And it flaps it and moves higher again. Strength of an eagle. Every time God talks about the eagle, he's speaking about something about new beginnings. And that's why I believe that God has sent me this message to say to some people here who feel that is the end of the road for them. God is saying, no, it's a new beginning for you. I thought I would hear an amen. amen. Every time you talk about the eagle, it reminds you, it must remind you of new beginnings. People in the West will say is the, it's, it's a symbol of the coming of spring. Now, what's the spring? Don't worry about that. Spring is just that time in, in Europe or America, which is somewhere between the time of winter and summer. And what makes it special is, uh, is the time when the weather is warmer. And guess what? Plants start to grow again. Can I promise that to someone here today? Your life is about to start growing again. What you have gone through, the troubles that you have gone through, is not designed to kill you. You are going to come out of this experience with a new beginning. Your feathers, new feathers will replace the bad old ones. You will fly higher again. God is saying to say to you, it's your springtime. It's the time of the beginning of new things in your life. So raise your head. Stand up high. Raise your expectation. Don't let this thing break you. It doesn't have the capacity to break you if you don't allow it. Can I hear yes, somebody? God is saying, persevere through this. Endure through this. Don't stop believing through this. Yet, yeah, difficult times, yes. We do not deny difficult times. We do not deny that we don't know what to do. But raise your hope. As a matter of fact, one of the things you will discover is that your leadership will go to another level. With what I have gone through. Now, my leadership is not the same. So when you go through, like the eagle gets a hit and it looks like it's going to die. But when you survive it, and we have survived this one, amen. And I say you will survive this one. I don't know what you are going through, but you will survive it. How do I know? Because God has given the strength of an eagle. You will also matter with strength as an eagle. Hallelujah. God will renew your strength. Don't give up. Anybody hear what I'm saying? God is bringing hope into your life again. God is bringing leadership into your life again. I thought how you are an amen. God is going to build a new level of resilience in your life again. You are going to experience a new level of freedom, courage, wisdom, new vision. And you are going to go to a new rebirth. There are things that I began to notice in my life like I wake up fresh I thought I'd gone through a lot of things in my life but I could see that right now like God is taking me through a rebirth hallelujah and like my life is only just time to begin amen I am an eagle believer I've been in heat at different times in my life by some of the worst life experiences but every time we go through that we come out stronger why? Because God gives us new beginnings. Can I hear yes, somebody? So God is bringing change into our lives. See again. Have a reassessment of that crisis you are in. Have a rethink of what you are going through right now. See God in the midst of it. That's why the Bible says, They that hope in the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall renew their strength like that of the eagle. Which man up towards the sun and gets broken by the sun and goes into the midst of the sea and comes back with new life and power and vigor. 
Because that's what God wants to make. This is not the time to be weak and to be stupid. This is the time to have a, a different conversation. Your conversation, the things you say must, be, must change. You have to begin to talk of vision. People will think you're crazy. We thought it's over for her. We thought it's over for him. But this is the time you're going to say, I've been soberly his yes, but I'm an eagle. Life has been so tough and so rough, but I'm an eagle. I'm rising above this. The eagle is so strong and so powerful. That's why with what it goes through, it flies the highest into the sky. In fact, some people believe that it's the, it's the closer to the creator. It flies highest because there is a strength that he has. There is a wisdom that he emits. There is a courage that, is, that, it, that the eagle has. And as I'm speaking this, I'm saying to you, these are the things that God is bringing to you. God is bringing courage. Fresh courage for what you have failed to achieve. God is sending me to say to you, be strong. Don't let the crisis in your work break you. Be strong in your career. Don't let the crisis in your marriage break you. Be strong in your marriage. Be strong for your children. Be strong in whatever God has given you. Fight the good fight of faith. Be the eagle. Don't deny that you are being hit on every side. Don't deny it. Because when you own the weakness, then it drives you to go to God. When you deny the weakness, it makes you hopeless. When you own the weakness, it drives you to God. When you deny the weakness, it gets, makes you hopeless. And the Bible says, hope makes not ashamed. You got to be hopeful. Praise the name of Jesus. I mean, I just came out from America where everything works. The road works. The power works. Everything works. But I told my wife, I said, you know, babe, as they came in, as a few into Nigeria, I feel a renewed strength. I feel this is the place. This is the best place in all the world. This is the place to be. National grid collapsed, but it's the best place to be. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Anybody can put a gun to your head anytime, but this is the best place to be. Right, exchange rate is seven and thirty-five to one dollar, but this is the best place to be. If you do not have that revelation, <laughs> you will jump all over the place. Are uh, people who jump from Lake, from Nigeria to England, relocate, and jump from England to America, and are jumping from America to Australia? You will jump all over the world until you jump into whatever it is. Stay strong. Someone tell everybody, stay strong. God is giving us the strength of an eagle. Lift your hands up and say, Father, I receive. Come on, somebody say, come on, and somebody again say, Father, I receive. I receive courage. I receive strength. Come on, come on, somebody engage with that word. Give me a word. Say, Father, I receive strength. I receive a new capacity. It is these things that make the eagle very strong. For the eagle is said to have a grip that is ten times stronger than that of humans. How many of you know that humans, when humans reach strong humans, handle you and they can drag you with their hands? The eagle bird has ten times the strength of the grip of the strongest man. Eagle is the only bird that will fly from the top of a mountain, Everest, fly into the earth and pick a whole monkey or a whole a whole, a whole goat. It will fly that and pick its prey. It feeds on goats. Feeds on prey ten times bigger than it. What am I trying to say to you? I'm saying that the new vision that God is going to be doing through you, they are going to be ten times what you have done in the past. I didn't hear an email. You are too quiet for me. I don't even know whether somebody is here. With what is coming upon your life, you will attempt and you will do things that are ten times what you've ever done before. It's going to happen. Because God is releasing upon you a new strength, a new vigor in the name of the Lord. So, so because of the strength, they know their capacity. The eagle will go and build his tent or his nest on the toppest of the high cliffs. If you read the book of Deuteronomy, it will tell you how God trains his children. I'm not going to talk about that today. I'll talk about it another time. The Bible says, as an eagle trains our children. 
the eagle doesn't play because the eagle knows that it's a, it's a dangerous, it's a monster bird. He trains a child like that too. Many of you are going through training of the Lord because your God is mighty, your God is powerful, your God is all knowing. All right, one of the things the eagle does, let me just throw this in, is that the eagle throws the don't forget that it builds its nest on the top of the highest cliff. When the, et- when the eggs are arched and the baby li- little eaglets, co- 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 co, it takes them and begins to throw them down from the high cliff. Throws them down. The baby eaglets say, I'm going to die. I'm-. Many of you are saying to God, I'm going to die. I'm going to die. God is throwing you down. God is training you. What you're going through right now looks like, I'm going to die. So this is what happened. The mother eagle throws the baby eagle out of that highest cliff. The baby eagle doesn't have strength to fly. Doesn't know what it means to fly. The feathers are still weak. Has never flown before. It's still a baby. Has only always been fed every day. But now it's time to grow. Tell everybody it's time to grow. What the problem is, you don't want to grow. You want to live in the nest forever. You want to be an eaglet for the rest of your life. You don't want to exercise your faith. The mother eagle throws the baby eagle out of the cliff to die and as the baby eaglet is going down saying so this is how I'm going to end I thought I'm going to live to be 100 years old eh? I shook my ear the mother eagle flies down as the baby is about to hit the ground picks it takes it back to the highest of the mountains again and the baby girl says, Praise the Lord. And while he's still doing praise and worship, the mother picks it again, throws him up again. Ah! Ah! We thought the testimony was complete. I'm gonna die. Believers are always like those eagles. I'm gonna die. So this is how I'm gonna die. God is training you. The Bible says, if God does not train you as a child, then you are a bastard. Most of the things you are going through right now are not meant to kill you. They are meant to strengthen you. They are meant to give a testimony. When people talk about overcoming crisis, I can say with my full chest what it means. If, even if, if it was theory before. How many people know that? <laughs> you can talk about theory when it has to do with other people's lives. But when he hits home, uh-huh, uh-huh. it's called boys to men. Some of us are men now. We're not just preaching this thing as a sermon to a group of people who, don't, who are not interested. We have honed this. This thing that we have seen and we have taught and we have handled. Right. It hits different. But that's what God does. It takes you to that process. All right. Because he wants to bring you into freedom and peace. One of the things I believe that all also was going to be doing to you today, many of you, I felt the man, that God is going to be giving you a new vision. One of the things that the eagle is known for is its vision. The eagle has the capacity of being able to see eight times stronger than the highest of the best man, the, man, the human with the highest, with the best. Eye. Now, I'm not talking about people who use glasses. So. I'm talking about people who have, I'm not talking about, those are borrowed highs. Yeah, I mean, you know Looking about the high of a baby. The people are using that saying, ooh, ooh, oops, oops. That's why it can see two miles, two and a half miles away. The eagle can see two and a half miles away. He's standing on that cliff of that highest rock and he sees a monkey and he sees a goat on the ground or a snake on the ground. And he looks down and he sees it. And it flies right from that place and takes it. That guy is a serious, he's a monster bird. He's got capacity. And I believe that's what God is bringing. God's going to be giving you visions eight times stronger than what you had before. They're going to be attempting some things. As I'm speaking to you, the guy, because I'm an apostle, we come by impartation. We don't preach, we bring impartation. God's going to be releasing some strength on the inside of you. You're going to, some things are going to be kicking up inside you and say, I want to do more. I feel that I say, I, I want to attempt this thing. I'm going to go for things 
10 times bigger than what I've done before. I'm seeing vision eight times stronger than I've ever seen before. What is happening to me? I, I don't know. Am I running? Am I, you are not running mad, amen. You are seeing vision. Hello, people. You are mounting with wings as eagle. Your energy is being renewed. New vigor is being given to you. Rest your feet and say, Father, I draw this in the name of Jesus. I draw this in. Speak to God. Speak to God. Speak to the Lord. Speak to the Lord. Speak to the Lord. Speak to the Lord. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Speak to the Lord. Come on. Speak to the Lord. Say, Father God, I draw strength. Come on. Attack your troubles right now. I want you to attack your trouble with faith. Say, Father God, I, I receive strength. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. You have not, you have not come to hear a preaching. You have not come to hear a nice preacher. No, that's not. You have come to receive an impartation. Say, Father God, I draw vision 10 times what I want to everybody here must leave this place with a new vision everybody here must attempt something you never attempted before something bigger 10 times bigger than you've ever done before I challenge everyone in this room I don't know who God is sending me to but I know God sent me to someone here in this meeting today today that has felt weak that has felt broken God says you cannot be broken you must not be broken you must not allow yourself to be broken come on talk to God and say Father God I draw strength I draw vision Come on, someone say, Father God, I draw vision. Eight times strong vision. Friends, we're going to be flying in some, in some new realms right now. And I say this as a church, as a pastor. I'm saying this as a man, as a father, as a leader. I'm saying as a human right now in the name of the Lord. I want you to say, Father God, I draw strength. Come on, talk to God and say, Father, I draw strength. Thank you for vision. Come on, put your hands on your own eyes and say, Father God, thank you for new vision. Come on, somebody. I am an eagle believer. I walk in the strength of an eagle. I band up with wings as an eagle. My youth is renewed like the eagles. God is renewing me. In my body, I'm being renewed. Come on, talk to the Lord. Come, to, talk to the Lord. Say, Father God, I'm being renewed in my strength, in my vision. Everybody must leave this place changed. God is announcing change over you. Yes, you have been a failure before. That's because you didn't know who you are. You have been defined by Nigeria's situation. There is no money. There is no food. Economy is bad. There is no word that, but you are going to begin to meal some new things in the name of the Lord. God's going to be giving you some new innovations and ideas. Is anybody in this room engaging with the supernatural? Because we are those, the Bible says, they that wait upon the Lord. They that wait upon the Lord. They that wait. We are those, I don't know about you, I am one of those who is going to wait upon the Lord, who is going to hope on the Lord. Lift your voice, talk right now. Church people, what do you want? Say, Father God, I receive strength. Many of you are going through marital problems. And that is breaking you. Say, Father God, I am no longer going to be struggling. I overcome this trauma. I overcome the stress. Come on, somebody's going, some of you are going through career challenges. Uh, where what? Some of you are in the midst of making a decision. Lord, should I relocate? Because this country is getting so tough. Everywhere things are taking. Lord, my dear, speak to me. Now talk to me. Say, Father, speak to my heart. Come on, somebody speak to God. I cannot hear prayer this morning. Lift your voice and talk to God. Church in Lagos, learn to pray. Church in Lagos, learn to wait upon the Lord. Church in Lagos, learn. don't wait until you become hopeless. Raise your expectation. Say, thank you, Father. And that's why I'm, I'm teaching you to pray. To teach, I teach you to pray vision. Say, Father, give me vision. Give me vision eight times what I've done before. Now, people may say to you, you have done so well. You know, people can, they have a way of saying to you, you have done so well. Some people will come here and say, wow, talks, you built this church, we have done so well. No, we haven't done well enough. We receive new vision. It's, we announce new beginning. Anybody hear what I'm saying? Come on, speak and say, Father, I receive new beginning in the name of Jesus. I receive new strength. They that wait on the Lord, they that hope on the Lord, they that look to him. They that focus on him, they that focus on him, they will mount up with wing as with eagle and face towards the sun. Say, Father God, Mary, I develop new vision, stronger vision, vision 10 times stronger than before. Lift your voice. I say, lift your voice and talk to God in the name of Jesus. Talk and say, Father God, this Nigeria will not break me. The Christ will not break me. I am more than conquerors. Come on, somebody talk to the Lord. Somebody talk. You have to learn to pray. See, guys, you see, there is no other way to overcome life's stress except you wait upon the Lord, except you hope in the Lord. I know they call you smart. I know, I know you think you are smart. You have no idea until life happens to you. 
Ah, if you have not built your faith and built your resilience and built your strength in the Lord, when life happens to you, you wouldn't know the next thing to do. So there is no smart person. Our strength is in the name of the Lord. Our hope is in the name of the Lord. In Him we live and move. Around. Paul says, I make my post in my weakness because right in my weakness is the power of God. So I'm going to engage with the power of God this morning. Say, Father, I draw this. I draw strength. Come on, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I draw grace. Paul says, every time I prayed, God said, don't worry. My grace is sufficient. Ask for grace, say, Father. Grant me grace. Grant me grace. Come and say, Lord, I receive grace. Pray for grace right now. Say, Father, whatever I'm going through right now, I draw grace. I draw strength. I draw wisdom. I draw courage. There are things you are going through you are ashamed to talk to your wife about. You are ashamed to talk to your husband about it. It's just recently that we are now beginning to brazen and begin to be vulnerable. Some of you think we never could talk about before as men. But now we have an understanding that right in the midst of our weaknesses is the power of God's kingdom. So Father, help us. Help me. Help me. Give me a new anointing for a fresh start. A new anointing for a fresh start. A new beginning by your spirit. Put your praise on it. Say thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, for helping me. Thank you, Father, for new grace. Thank you for new strength. Hallelujah. Transform, transform.